Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, on this week's episode we're going to be talking about the... Falcon Acoustics M10 stand mount loudspeaker. Very good. Now, Falcon Acoustics, now you may not be quite as familiar with them as you should be, but they're actually celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. Wow. So they've been going for an awfully long time. Uh, they're based in Oxfordshire, in sunny England. Yep. Um, the, uh, the, the, like us. Just like us. Yep. The, the, the king of the shires. Yep. Probably upset half of our listeners now by saying mm-hmm. that. Um, but yeah, so they're based in Oxfordshire. They've been going for ages. Um, in fact, their, their claim to fame, I think, is probably not these speakers, but the fact that they uh, did a, a fantastic rework of the classic LS35A yes. BBC studio monitors. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and they literally sort of took, I mean, if you see the Falcon Acoustics ones in the originals, they look identical. Yeah. But they redid all the drive units, you know, the, the, the B110, isn't it, drive unit? Yeah. Um, and, um, and did a fantastic job. And I think it's sort of recognised through the, 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 the hi-fi industry that yeah. they, they've made the best LS35As. Yeah, I mean, I, I, can, I can just hear the, the internet exploding now. <laughs> <laughs> So um, the uh, I'm not um, pretentious enough to to d- say which the best uh, uh, LS35A is because there are lots of self-appointed LS35A experts who've got you know very very sincere and uh, strongly held opinions. But in my to my ears anyway, I think the Falcon Acoustics LS35A is is probably the best one I've heard. You know. Um, but uh, you know, it, it it may not be, and there's all kind of you know, it's like a, uh, it's like a wine, isn't it? You know, which is the best vintage of this or that? Sure. But certainly, um, it's it's there or thereabouts as one of the best, and um, it has a very interesting backstory as well. So, basically, the um, as we know, the LS35A, and indeed your Lin Saras uh, that you use, and yeah. your uh, Lin Ice Barracks that you use, and the Lin Cans that I used to use, yeah. uh, and, and, and want to buy another pair if I can find some, um, all used, that's, you know, anyone's got something. <laughs> so, uh, yes, email us, please. Um, so it'll just save me, uh, you know, uh, going going through eBay for five, five hours. Yes. Um, but they all use the um, KEF, drive units that were developed in the, the basically the late 60s stroke early 70s um, and they use the the Beckstream. Beckstream is the is the name of the material um, and um, at the time it came out then it, let's say let's walk to around early seven, early 1970s every speaker almost every speaker used paper drive units of one sort or another um, and um, the 70s saw um, loudspeaker designers experimenting with drive unit materials um, in, in, you know, very enthusiastically. And there are a lot of developments in kind of, you know, sort of uh, metal drive units, aluminium and Beckstreen. And uh, of course, uh, Yamaha used beryllium and so on. Sony were using carbon fiber and their Carbocon or whatever they were called drivers. You know, it was a real field day for, for new technology. And of course, the, the KEF drivers um, that appeared in um, the LS35A uh, were iconic. Uh, the B110 uh, is is the one, and Falcon Acoustics is basically um, through a long story which we won't go into here because we haven't got time. Uh, effectively acquired the rights and the ability to remanufacture them. Mm. So mm. you can you can you know get new B110s from Falcon Acoustics, and they are beautifully done aren't they made totally yeah. in England yeah which absolutely pre- which yeah. premium materials yeah. Yeah. so they've made their bones haven't they in the high yeah. industry they yeah. proved the point they've stuck yeah. around for 50 years yeah. and they made some great speakers yeah. haven't they absolutely and um, you know a great source for kind of uh, spare parts and spare drivers and replacement drivers and so on for, yes. for those kind of classic speakers um, but of course uh, Jerry Jerry Bloomfield who we we, we, we both know is, uh, is who runs it um, is kind of launching off on his own odyssey of of uh, speaker discovery by doing his own special range. Yes. And the the M10, uh, which is what we're talking about this this ish, this episode, um, is his sort of almost kind of LS35A, you know, equivalent. Competition. Yeah, it's not <laughs> quite. It, it has some you know noticeable differences, but 
It's kind of the, roughly the same size. It's a little bit bigger. Yes. Uh, it's got a ported uh, uh, base port, a reflex port, uh, whereas of course the original uh, 35A doesn't. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's it's kind of a you know a modern interpretation. You you yeah, could say. Yeah, it is. It is. It reminded me a little bit of the uh, the Proax Super Tablets, um, and also a little yep. bit with the sound. And yes. look, the, I can't. I'm not sure I can give a much higher compliment than that. Yeah. Because the Super Tablets are some of the best speakers, well, the best tiny speakers I've ever yeah. heard. Yeah. Um, for me, they're better than the Lin Cans. Yeah. Um, and easier to drive and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, exactly right. And they're they're a really lovely form factor. They're beautifully made. I, I, I think I'm right in saying they're made in Italy. The cabinets are made in Italy. Cabinets made in and Italy. And the drive units yeah. here. Yeah, so the drive units and obviously it's full assembly and you know yes, it's made yeah. here. And he's using some. You're talking about using interesting materials for drive units. He's using some interesting materials for some of his high end ones. He's using graphene uh, for some of his high end units, which is incredibly light and yeah. incredibly strong. So he, you've got really fast treble units yeah. um, and, and you know so, so it's great to see a you know, 50 year old company being so innovative yeah uh, which is just brilliant but for me the M10s I, I you know there's something I've always loved ever since I started getting into hi-fi about small speakers where you sort of shut your eyes and you think you know how are they making that much noise yeah. how is all that wonderful sound yeah. coming from those tiny little boxes yeah and it's a wonderful illusion and I think if you have a really big pair of speakers, I mean, my Lins are a classic example. Yeah. You don't really get the, the stereo imagery because the, you know, the speakers are quite overpowering in the room. Um, but if you've got a small pair of speakers, there's almost like a bigger illusion, yeah. isn't there? It's like Because it just feels quite unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, your brain doesn't quite compute how, how, or where all that sound is coming from. Yeah. Um, I actually had something similar. This is sounding a bit off the wall now, but I remember going to visit Alistair Robertson Aitman's house yeah. um, in Stenning. Yeah. Um, down south. Yeah. Uh, who was the owner of, of SME? SME, so Model yep. Engineering, absolutely. And he played his system and he had these stacked quad uh, ESL speakers, um, but he hid them behind a sonically transparent curtain. Right. So, so all you could see with this curtain, and it was, it was really strange sound because it was like you just didn't know where anything was coming from. Um, and it had an amazing sound stage and it really fooled your mind. It was, yeah. it was, it was a sort of great part of that listening experience. And I feel like these these Falcons are a little bit like that. You know, it's almost like wow. You know, there's some great imaging coming yeah. from these tiny little boxes. Yeah. So I love that. I yeah. Really love that. Yeah. Um, it's and it, it's you know they're not without bass. You know they've got a good punchy bass. Um, I've heard some horrible ported speakers. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard far yeah. more than I have. Yeah. Um, these ain't horrible in any way, shape, or form. No, it's a tuneful bass. It's not. You know, it's not terribly strong, but what do you expect from a small speaker? Absolutely. Like and, um, and again, like the super tablets, the Proax, you know, you forgive them not yeah. having a huge bottom end because the, the rest of it is so sweet and so yeah. gorgeous. And I felt very similar with this. You know, it, yeah. it, it was so really lovely to listen to. Really, really yeah. lovely to listen to. I think the interesting thing is for us is when we were doing our listening tests, we had them in my system and we've been playing my uh, Yamaha NS1000s, mm. hadn't we? Mm. Uh, we then went to the M10s. Obviously, it's, they're nowhere near as good. But the point is, they they were still perfectly fun to yes, listen to, really were. weren't they? Yeah, you know, yeah. it wasn't a case of we'll plug them in. Okay, five minutes. Uh, you know, get them get them off and get the yams back. Yeah, um, I, I can tell yeah. if you if you if you like speakers because um, if I come around to your house and you we, we listen to a pair and then I say go away for we can come back and they're still there and <laughs> still out then they must be doing a great job yeah and I remember the neat magisters were like yeah. that you had yeah. those you had those yeah. in your system for a while yeah um, and they they were they were lovely and these remind me sort of very much of, of you know how much I like the neats yeah. Um, yeah and I think we did a review on the neats as well on Riff as well we did um, yeah which yeah. which again super loudspeakers you know nice to see people making some lovely small loudspeakers yeah I mean I think the interesting thing as well is that these are um, so I think in the 80s and 90s um, then everyone seemed to want to get away from the 70s you know the, the 70s speakers so 70s speakers generally not always had a very um, kind of um, mellifluous and smooth sound and um, the, the, the sort of 90s, 80s, 90s speakers try to be harsher and harder and faster yeah, and tighter yeah. um, and kind of less inviting. And, and some of them like were quite shrill, I think. Um, Undoubtedly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think going back to what you're saying, you know, when they were experimenting with some of these 
materials for the drive units some of them just didn't work and they were you know ear bleedingly bright yeah um and you know you get it they're trying to be fast and you know transparent and all of this stuff but actually just ended up with a really bright loudspeaker yeah um yeah so these and, aren't like that well exactly that that's the whole point so yeah. just recently there's been a kind of resurgence in a kind of classic sound and spender for example have done very mm. well out of that you know a lot of Harbeth sell a lot of uh, speakers uh, to people who like that kind of classic sound yeah. um, and um, and I think these fit very well in that kind of niche so you don't have to have everything kind of laser etched on your forehead no, sure, um, sure. and the, um, the the tweeter that's fitted is a is a really nice 25 mil Seas uh, soft dome tweeter uh, and it works with the B110 the kind of Falcon acoustics uh, kind of remade one uh, and uh, they integrate very well together. There's, uh, it's very smooth, isn't it, up and down. Um, and just maybe a slight plumminess in the upper bass, just a very gentle, just to give a little bit more body, yes. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the point is the bass is fast. It goes boing, boing, boing. It, does, it's not, it doesn't slur. No. Um, and that makes listening fun. And as you say, it images very well. Yes. Um, yeah. And the other thing is that... Um, the LS3 vi LS35A sensitivity is, I think it's 82 dB. So you've got to have a really uh, powerful amplifier to get really a squeak out of them. Like the Lin Cans as well. Yeah, right? exactly the same yeah. issue. It's because yeah. the infinite baffle, isn't it? Yes, and also the, 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 the drive units are quite heavy relative to, to right. paper. Okay. Um, so you need a bit more power. And also the crossovers can be a bit complex sometimes. Sure, sure. Um, so it's a combination of things, but um, the the Falcons are uh, 86 dB uh, for one watt, and and your average kind of LS35A kind of thing is 82. Mm -hmm. um, so that means you can have a you know you you can use them with with uh, less specialist amps. You can you know they'll most modern amps will drive them without without worrying and produce a, a decent sound kind of into the you know a decent volume into the room. So, sure, sure. Um, they've also got a power handling of 100 watts RMS again. Lin cans, LS three five A's, that kind of thing. You're like twenty five, thirty five watts, weren't you? So yes, yeah. yeah. I'm a bit worried though because um, you've sort of said that there, there's this sort of seventies resurgence of loudspeakers, and I've just been saying how much I like them. So are you saying I'm a bit of a seventies old duffer here? Uh, no, Mike, you are. But uh, <laughs> I'll. Uh, you might think that I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> so I think you insinuated. Yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, no, I mean it's it's uh, you know it's great. Um, I mean I I still I think the neat magistra that we spoke about or the the minister, mm. um, you know, are, are very tough rivals for it. But they've got a much more modern sound. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, with yes. the ribbon tweeter and the ice barrack bass. Yes. Um, yeah. But these 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 are a very kind of um, charming. I would say they are in a, in a really good way. They are. Uh, and you you're not aware of of of, of the, the compromises. Every speaker's got compromises, and the question is whether you know, they become obvious when you're listening to them. They don't get in the way, do they? So, not at all. And yeah. price-wise, like yeah. just under two and a half? Two, right? three, nine, five, okay. yeah, yeah, at the moment. I think that's a good price point. Yeah. I really do. I think they're compelling speakers for yeah. that. You know, there is some competition at the price. And, and we've talked a lot about speakers because there's, there are so many on the market. But I really like them. And I think, you know, it, it's quite clear when you listen to them that they're, they're not new kids on the block. They've got a pedigree. They've got lots of previous products to draw from and they clearly like the sound they're making yeah and I just think hats off to you for that you know yeah. you're not you're, you're you're refining the real the wheel rather than yeah. reinventing it yeah um, and I just think that's brilliant so yeah. so yeah so really really good stuff so you know Jerry and the team you know 10 out of 10 good great job absolutely so we enjoyed listening to those yeah we really did and I well worth them. checking out the rest of the range as well I agree I yes yeah. I agree I think we should definitely try and see if we can get some of the the, the high-end ones to yeah. see what they sound like. That would be quite cool. Yeah. And I would actually very much like to listen to their LS35As again because it's been a long time for yeah. me. Yeah. So that would be cool. So, Jerry, <laughs> there you go. You've been warned. Um, Hi-Fi Riffometer score. Yeah, I, I personally give them, I think, eight to eight, eight maybe eight and a half. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I mean, it's not totally to my taste. Um, I, I do like a little bit more definition and, and insight. Um, but again, 
I, I could live with them very happily as my last speaker. They're, they're great fun to listen to. They really are. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with you. It's yeah. a good solid sort of eight, eight and a half for me as well. Yeah. We'll go eight and a half, shall All right. we? All right, yeah, let's do because that. Because we want to borrow Jerry's speaker. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. we'll, have to give him, yes. we'll give him the half yeah. a point for that. So there we are. <laughs> Um, but no, really good. So, so great stuff. The Falcon Acoustics, the M10s. Um, thanks very much indeed for watching this episode of Mike and Day's Hi-Fi Riff. And we'll very much look forward to seeing you at the next one. Thank you. Thanks, thanks very much. Bye. Bye.